got to be used to him letting you down. It's the only thing Reg Ellsworth knows how to do. That's not fair, Mother. Oh, hello, Ben. <coughs> Hiya. Her husband was coming to have the weekend with her, so she lets herself get all excited. I can't think why. And then he cries off. You know very well that it was pressure of work. I mean, sometimes people have to put work first, don't they, Bill? Well, it all depends. I mean, I'm supposed to be working today, this afternoon, but I'm not. I'm going to Liverpool to pick up Jim MacDonald from the ferry. He's coming back from Ireland. You see, Bill here puts his friend first. Reg Oldsworth won't even put his wife first. Oh, will you give it a rest, Mother? Bill doesn't want to listen to all this. So he's coming back then, is he? I wondered if he'd gone for good. I suppose. He must think there's some future for him round here, eh? I don't know. Anyway, look, will he give us one of them pies? I can eat it on the way to Liverpool, eh? Do for me dinner, eh? And then again, of course, it is nice to have the chance to get dressed up for once. Maybe it's good for your lunch. I'll go when you come back. And all the men in their evening dress. It just gives it a sense of occasion. I, mean, I know they call it a ladies' night, but I think they could call it a lords' and ladies' night. Well, if you could get back for about quarter to. Yeah, because say what you like, Rita. I mean, they are all men who've achieved something in this world. Oh, it's such a shame you're not going to be there. I do feel for you. Look, are you going for this lunch or not? Yes, yes, and I won't be long because I want to discuss my jewellery with you. Bye. This is unbearable. Uh -huh. uh, Fred! Ah, oh, hello, Fred. It's, uh, it's Rita Sullivan. No, as it so happens, I'm not after a nice piece of undercut. Listen, Fred, um, have you had your lunch yet? Oh, right, well, listen, um, how about meeting me across at the Rovers? Two o'clock-ish? I'll buy you a sandwich. Right, see you. Bye. Worry, my child, you shall go to the ball. I beg your pardon, Rita. Oh, Emily, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was talking to myself. I say that's a bad sign, don't they? There you are, though. Thank you, Betty. Thank you, I have a hot pot when you're ready. Oh, I'll bring it over to you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, Derek. Is it all right if I join you? Oh, uh, no. I'm sorry, Maybe It's out of the question. Um, we're, we're discussing matters connected with the uh, square dealers. Oh, I don't want to intrude where I'm not welcome. Sorry about that, gentlemen. May I join you, Deirdre? Yeah, sure. Please do. I'd be glad of the company. Right, well, carry on. Well, uh, actually, Dirk, old man, uh, uh, you yourself aren't a member of the Square Dealers yet, are you? Well, no, but uh, I've been told to put myself forward. Ah, yes, well, I, I, I'm sorry, Derek, but we'll have to ask you to leave while we talk things over, you know. It's a, it's a Square Deal rule, you see. Well, that's a bit pointless, isn't it? I mean, it's not as if we're talking about state secrets. Uh, now, Dirk, that's no way to talk, not if you want to join the uh, rectangle. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. Um, I, I apologise. Excuse me. Behave like children, you square deal. Um, on second thoughts, Mavis, I'd much sooner be with you. May I? It's fine by me, Derek. I suppose so. They think the world of Curly, you know. Who do? All his fraternal brethren in the square dealers. Oh, that lot. It's taken three or four of them to change a light bulb, you know. And they'd have to have a conference beforehand. So why has it got to be me doing all this work on ladies' evening? Because you are the newest brother. It's a great honour, you know. Anyway, I'll get used to the, the form of practice of the rectangle. Just keep your eye on the master dealer, that's the main thing. Yeah, well, it's always a good idea to keep your eye on Fred Elliot at the best of times. Now, if and when you see the master dealer rise from a sitting position, you, Norman, must cry, please be upstanding. Upstanding? Upstanding for the worshipful master dealer. Can't I just say, do you mind standing up, please? Can you blooming neckers like, look, it's the, it's the form, lad. I mean, it's the wording. It goes back hundreds of years. Well, well, 1927, yeah, actually. Well. But I was pointing to someone, and then, at the very end of the evening, when the master dealer and his lady guest... Oh, well, he uh, won't have one, will he? Because nobody will go with him. And well, I don't blame him. All the same, when the master dealer is making his exit, you, Curly, must give him the clap. Yeah. Pardon? Start clapping. Not too slow, mind. Yeah, not too fast, neither. And then, you see, everybody else will take the cue from you. Now, be sure not to set too slow a rhythm, man, because the last thing we want is the worshipful master dealer. They're getting the slow hand clap. Oh, I don't know. I could live with that. <laughs> Jim, over here. Ah, what a bit, you only house you could. Listen, thanks for coming down. Ah, that's all right. Um, how was the trip? Good, eh? I did on. Listen, uh, yeah, I mean, it served its purpose, you know. Got my head together, did something, and made a few decisions, you know. Oh, yeah? Like what? Well, 
Look, I've done some stupid things, you know, that. Ah, had a bit of provocation, you know what I mean? But all the same, I'm not on. Um, so the top priority now, you know, get, get things back together with Liz. What I'm saying, Mrs. MacDonald, is that we've been at this point before. <clears throat> well, we have, yeah. You instructed my partner to start divorce proceedings, let's see, just over two years ago, and then changed your mind. Yeah, well, I shouldn't have done. I was wrong. But uh, I think I let myself be persuaded. Well, actually, to be honest, I think I persuaded myself more than anything. I understand that. I think it's perfectly reasonable to be reluctant to finally give up on a marriage. All the same, I was wrong. If I hadn't changed my mind, I think I'd be a lot happier now. And Jim too, I expect. So anyway, you're instructing me to go ahead? I am, yes. And I won't mess you about. Not this time. I want a divorce, and the sooner the better. Vera says get shut. 25 to 3. Yeah, she knows, but she says get shut. Open again at 5. Is there out treadmill in here someday? I don't know why you do evenings. Well, I don't do many of them, and Curly no. don't like me doing them anyway, but don't like letting Vera down. Mm. She plays on that, doesn't she? <laughs> Can I have your glasses, please, loves? Yes, well, I'd better be getting back. Maybe it's a lonely start morning. <laughs> Staff. They don't know they're born these days. I say they don't know they're born. Let I moan. Show her who's boss. Did you get that beef I sent you? I did, Fred, thank you. It was lovely. Top rum can't beat it. Is, um, is that what you'll be sitting down to at your ladies' night? No, worse luck. No, it's a buffet do. Mind you, it'll be a decent feed. I do wish you'd change your mind and let me take you. Well, are you still asking? Certainly. Well, in that case, thank you very much. It'll be a pleasure. It will. I'll see to that. Let's have another drink. Can I have your glasses now, please? So, uh, have you spoke to her then? Listen, me. Nah. Now, what I have to do, Willie, I couldn't do it on the telephone. She wouldn't listen. Well, I wouldn't bank on listening anyway. Oh, look, take the notice of me, Jim. You'll go ahead, lad. Good luck to you, mate. Oh, how's your horses? Like, you want to know why I'm hopeful? Well, I'll tell you why. My ma rang her up, so she did. Well, as soon as I get off the boat and go home, she says, Where's Liz? Well, I wouldn't tell her, so she phoned her up. So what did she say? <laughs> well, my ma says, Why aren't you here with Jim? Well, Liz didn't sound. She just said, Well, I'd arrive. Never mentioned splitting up at all. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. Well, that's good news, isn't it, Willie? Eh? Means the door's not shut. Yeah. Well, I'd say, yeah, maybe. I've, uh, I've got to tell you, Jim. What? Liz has moved back in your house. Has she? I should have stayed on, so does eh? <laughs> yeah, but hang on, hang on. She put all your clothes into bin bags, yeah? And asked me to take them away, which I did. They're all round at my house. Yeah, right, fine, I understand that, OK? Right, she's trying to hit back at me. She's mad, OK? I understand. She wants me to wake my work my passage, doesn't she? Yeah. All right, I can live with that. The main thing is, she's back home. Right, there's your latch key. Right. There, that's your mortise. Smash in, thanks. Now, I gave you the keys to the back, didn't I? Yes, yes, I think I've got the lot now, thanks. Well, I can't promise you won't get any burgers, love, but I'll tell you what, with that lot, we'll put them off a bit. <laughs> it's uh, not the burglars I'm worried about. You're home early. Yeah, I thought I'd leave them to it like they'd have to do if I was struck by lightning or something. Well, good for you. Do you fancy a cup of tea? No, I feel like going out tonight. Pictures, maybe. Oh, is there anything on in the theatre that you fancy in town? Where's the paper? I can't tonight. Vera's asked me to go in. Oh, no. It's sod's law, is that? We ought to go out more than we do, you know, while we've got the chance. I mean, we won't be able to do it if we have kids, would we? No. No, yeah, because then you're into babysitters and all that stuff. Oh, yeah, I suppose so, but, um... What do you think about children? I mean, we never actually really discussed it, have we, really? No. Well, well, in, in principle, yeah. I mean, I could live with kids, I think. What do you think? Do you want them? Two. Boy first, then a girl. Oh. 
And uh, the... <clears throat> you sorted out names? Blake, I thought for the boy and for the girl, possibly Tiffin, then what do you think? Well, uh, we don't have to decide anything yet, do we? Oh. I mean, not until, um, not until something happens. <laughs> oh. I'll tell you what, though, we're having nobody call Norman. <laughs> <laughs> so, you want kids then? Right. Well, I suppose we better start, uh, what do you call it? Trying for them. <laughs> well, fair enough. I'm always willing to give it a try, as well you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that. Uh, I have been meaning to mention, actually, because, well, I'm nearly 30 and uh, my biological clock's ticking away. And for the last couple of weeks, I've not really been taking any um, precautions. Oh. Oh, I see. <clears throat> oh, fair enough. So now it's down to uh, Mother Nature, then. <laughs> if she needs a hand, I'm more than willing. Oh. <laughs> anyway, uh, check it easy, eh, Jim? Yeah, well, if you mean by that, don't go causing any bother. You don't have to worry. There's going to be none of that done for me, anyway. Well, good luck, anyway. Yeah. Keep me posted, eh? Yeah, all right. Yeah. All right, see you soon. Okay. All the best. Cheers. She's changed the locks. Locked out of my own house. Changed all the locks. What in the name of God is that all about? Come on, Jim. I've had the locks changed because there's no way you and me can live together anymore. We'll have to talk. There's nothing to say as far as I'm concerned. Well, I have plenty to say. All right, look, come on. Just spare me a few minutes inside the house. We can't discuss this out in the street in the name of God. All right, I'll talk to you, but not in the house. I won't be alone with you. Uh, yes? Oh, Mrs. Sullivan, I, I just called in to say thank you. For what? For taking the curse off the Square Dealers' ladies' night, Fred Elliott just rang me with the news. He's over the moon. Really? Oh, yes, indeed. And I just wanted to say our worshipful master dealer could not have a more gracious lady on his arm. Thank you. Uh, yes, you see, I mean, between these four walls, and I, I know Mrs Wilton here is the soul of discretion, you are doing the Square Dealers in the mass a considerable favour. You see, our present uh, master dealer is somewhat of a rough diamond, and he does benefit from the civilising influence a lady such as yourself brings to any uh, social intercourse. <laughs> it's just a night out, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, no, no, no. A night to remember, I, I can assure you. So, thank you once again, and uh, well, bye for now. <laughs> bye. He's a creep, that fella. Is this right? You are going to the ladies' evening with Fred Elliott? I knew there was something I meant to tell you. Well, you said you can't stand the man. Well, I'm not exactly besotted. Well, in that case, why are you letting him take you? Well, you kept telling me what a wonderful night it was going to be, what a brilliant social occasion I was missing. As a matter of fact, it was you that talked me into it. So, uh, what do you want to drink? I don't want anything. This is a boozer. You have to have something. Right. Half a lager, then. Great. Take a seat there. I'll bring it over. Right, girl. Uh, pint for me, half a lager and a small whiskey, please. This job that Baldwin's offering you, I know it's a swine to work for, you know. So you keep telling me. I know what I'm talking about. I've told you. Ivy used to work for Oh, well, then that'll be something else we've got in common, then, apart from yourself. Ah, you can laugh. But if you work for Baldwin, you live to regret it. Well, it's too late now, isn't it? I've handed him my notice, remember? Well, I'll, uh, I'll 
I'm not bother saying cheers, but thanks very much for agreeing to talk to me. Make it quick, Jim. Say what you've got to say because I want to go. <sighs> You're not going to make this very easy for me, are you? I can't blame you. Elizabeth, I just want to say I'm truly sorry I hit you. I wish to God I'd never done that. I've never regretted it so much in my life. I'm sorry. I want you to know that. Well, I expect you mean it at this moment. Look, I've been doing some really hard thinking about what we used to have, where we've been, what we can have again. Look, I know we can pick the pieces up, love, if you're willing to try. I'm not. Thanks very much, love. Bye-bye. Hello, love. Hi, now. Yeah. What's all this about Fred Elliot taking you to the ladies' night? Bye, oh, there must be a shortage of gossip round here today. Yeah, well, you want to keep your chairs at home with him, you know. I mean, he, he fancied Audrey. He'd run after anything in a skirt. Oh, thank you. Oh, I didn't mean it like that. Well, whatever way you did mean it, you can just apologise. There's no to apologise. I was just telling Rita she should be careful with Fred Elliot. Well, I know why she's going. It's all down to jealousy. It is not. Oh, yes, just because me and Audrey are going. It is not jealousy. <laughs> it's self-defence. I mean, she kept going on about it, you know. I was the only one not going to the ball. I felt like Cinderella. What does that make Mavis and Audrey, then? Ugly sisters. <laughs> that was a joke. <sighs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Hiya. Hello. I had this sudden urge to come and look at you because I was missing you. Oh. Well, that deserves a drink on the house. And as Vera's left me in charge, I'm giving free drinks to selected patrons. Oh, yeah. And who else comes into this category? <laughs> Nobody. You're the only one. Lovely. <coughs> Twenty years, Liz. Twenty years of marriage. Are you going to throw that all away because I made one bad mistake? That's not how I see it. It's not even as if all the fault was on one side. All right, look, I hold my hands up, OK? I should never have hit you. I was buying out of order and I'm deeply sorry. But you've got to take some of the blame, haven't you? It don't matter who's to blame. I was hoping you could say that. But it does matter who's to blame. Are you trying to tell me I had no provocation for what I did? No. No, I admit that. I agree. And if it makes you feel any better for what use it is... I'm sorry too. Right, okay, all right, fine. Right, let's just forget about it. Start again, all right? If I'm prepared to forget, then so can you. I don't want to. Yeah, I want to forget, but I don't want to start again. Jim, I don't know any other way to say this. I don't want to spend any more of my life with you. Hell's take Elizabeth. By God, you're determined to make this hard for me, aren't you? Do you want to see me crawl, is that it? What in the name of God is all the changing locks business about? What's that all about? Because I won't live in the same house as you. Not anymore. And I don't see why I should be the one who moves out. Now, when we get divorced... We're not getting divorced. Yes, we are. I've been to see a solicitor and I've told her to get on with it. Now, when it's all settled, we'll sell the house and split the money. But till then, I don't see why I have to be the one who moves out. And that's why I've got the locks changed. Well, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of your money and it's a waste of time because there's not a lock built that'll keep me out of my own house if I want to get in there. You've got me wrong, Elizabeth. I'm not going quietly. I'm not going to shuffle off into the distance like some snivelling wee sod taking orders from his wife. You gonna drink that or what? I told you I don't want a drink. Yeah, well I do, because by God I've got things that I want to talk about. Raquel, put a pint in there, a large whiskey in there. Pint in you. That's right, yeah, a large whiskey. Are you sure you don't want to... She's frightened to death of him. I could see it in her face. Don't you think you should go after him? Me? He could be killing her. Yeah, yeah, all right. Curly? Yeah. Be careful. Right! 
Open this door, let me... I'll break it down! Leave a loud carefulness between me and Liz, all right? Come on, come on, Pop. Get Look, I want to talk to my wife in my own home. Take a walk! It's no good. Take a walk! Police! Mary, please, please, hurry! Number 11, Carnation Street. Come on, come on. Come on, Jimmy, you stupid. Come on, come on. Get off me, Tony. Yeah, come on, he's round the back. Come on. Yeah. I wish I got as much attention. You need to tune it up as well, do you? Yeah. Come on in, Liz. One way or another. Open that bloody door. You're right. 